What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Okay, so moving right along, we're working in Studio One version 4 today, and I want to take a moment to talk about working with virtual instruments, or more specifically, gain staging when working with virtual instruments. Now, first off, full disclosure, I'm not interested in turning this into a debate about the benefits or merits of gain staging in a modern-day DAW. All I will say is that I have a particular level at which I like to work in terms of my gain staging when producing and tracking. This may change down the line when I mix, but in terms of producing and tracking, I like to work at a conservative level. And I find that with 99% of virtual instruments that I use, usually the default value that they're outputting is like, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 dBs too loud for what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and let's just put a little track together over here. I have my Music Loop Cheat Sheets, which is something that I've created over here, which essentially gives me some basic chord progressions. And in addition to being able to monitor these because they're music loops, if I want to hear the actual progressions, another thing that I can do is I can expand here and I can simply drag and drop my MIDI from that music loop into my range window. So now let's go over to our instruments and I'm just going to grab uh, something, we could use anything, but I'll just grab something from Mai Tai. So we've got some leads, um, maybe, you know what, let's just go ahead and let's use a pad. Let's drag the first instance we have available here and let's see where this is sitting in terms of its default level, where the preset was created. Okay, so that's not too bad. You can see over here it was pushing up to like minus six. One thing you may notice is I have a VU meter that's on my main outs. I have this set to an 18 scale. All that this means is that zero VU on this meter is representative of minus 18 dBFS RMS in terms of the average level in my DAW. And then I always pull down my sensitivity a little bit because I find these needles are a little bit sensitive. But this is where I like to leave things set when I'm producing a track, when I'm gain staging. And my goal is that my cumulative mix is hovering somewhere around zero and at the louder parts. I'm not too worried if it goes to three or even five because keep in mind I have all that headroom. But essentially, that's what I like to use for gain staging. I'm not too OCD on where my individual tracks end up, but I do like my faders to be at around the zero mark. Okay, so let's talk about the point of this video. One thing that a lot of people may do, and this is something that I did in the beginning, is you know, once you're happy with something, that they would adjust their global output volume and trim this back so that it comes in a little more in line with where they'd like to, it to come in, basically at a pre-fader level. So maybe something like that, if I look at my VU meters, I could even pull this down a little bit more, leave myself lots of headroom for any drums, bass, or any other instrumentation that we may have involved here. Let's go ahead and loop enable this and activate our loop. But one problem with that is if you're producing and you may find yourself, you know, scrolling through some presets to try out different sounds, one thing that you'll notice is that your levels could potentially jump up 20 dB. And if you're going through some really jarring sounds, if you have your monitors up or your headphones at a certain level, this could be really, really loud. So for that reason, I like to use a mix tool to gain stage my virtual instruments. So this isn't really anything new. I'm sure a lot of people do this, but one thing that Studio One allows you to do very, very easily is that as opposed to having to come in here and either search for the plugin or maybe go to my effects tabs and see if I can search for it, find it in my favorites or scroll down to the proper folder, which in this case would be Personas. One thing that I've set up is I've essentially set up a macro that loads an instance of mix tool and it also loads a predefined preset that I've created. So once I've created this instrument part over here and let's go ahead and let's restore this back to its default. I just simply go ahead and I fire off a key command and this will automatically load an instance of mix tool with the gain set to minus 15. Now I can dial this up or down as needed, get it to fit my track and I'm good to go. And then the benefit here is that if I'm scrolling through different presets, maybe I wanna to go to, I don't know, let's try this, or maybe let's try Chill Wave. 
I'm not getting a jarring level mismatch in terms of going from one sound to the other. So this is kind of in line, even though the volume is set to be minus 2.3, I've got my instance of mix tool that's been instantiated over here that is keeping things in line. Now the other benefit here is that if I wanted to go ahead and render this to audio, we have the option to render inserts. So if I render this into the actual audio file, we'll go ahead and click OK, then those gain changes that are made are actually rendered into the file itself. So we can see that I've got my audio over here and this is set over here. Now the benefit here is that I don't have to render this and then pull this event gain down 10 dBs. Sometimes I find if you were to render something, even if it's in its default state, it will actually be clipping. Now the benefit here is that if I revert this back to an instrument track, that it obviously retains and I'm not getting any different level mismatches. Okay, so enough talk, let's talk about how to go about setting this up. Well, the first thing you need to do is if you wanna set this up, you need to go into Mix Tool and you need to either create your own preset, which is something I've done here. I've created what I call the VI dimmer, virtual instrument dimmer. And if I load this, this is set to minus 15. Find something that you like, save it as a preset, and then once we enter our macros, that's where we have a little bit of flexibility. So we'll go ahead, I'm gonna click my Add Mix Tool preset. We'll click the Edit tab. You notice over here I've got two commands, Track, Add Insert to Selected Channels. Let's expand this so we can see it a little bit better. And in addition, I've also got Console Show Channel Editor. Now this is simply so that the actual GUI of the plugin opens up after I've fired off that macro. So if we go to Insert, we just need to scroll down, add insert to selected channels. Now the thing to keep in mind here is you wanna look for these three dots. These three dots indicate that we have arguments. And what arguments allow you to do is have a little bit more control over your macros. So for example, you see here, I'm loading the device mix tool, but then I'm actually choosing a specific preset. Now I could change this to any preset if I wanted to. I could uh, you know change it to minus six, minus three, but I've chosen to go with this VI dimmer preset. So all this does is it loads this preset for the selected channel and then it opens up that console editor view or that channel editor view, which allows me to immediately tweak this. So if I wanted to load something completely different, like let's say I wanted to load something from, you know, Codex Stereo. If I was to go ahead and do this, we'll go ahead and replace this. This would be pretty loud if I was to go ahead and just push play. So that's way too loud, but when I go ahead and fire off my macro, it automatically brings this down, and this is much more in line with the way that I like to work. And of course, we could still go ahead and tweak the global volume of the virtual instrument if we wanted to, but in this case, I find it very useful to just be able to tweak this. Now, the other benefit of this particular macro is that let's say I wanted to work with multiple tracks. So check out this new Impact XT Kits and Sounds. There's this awesome folder with all these different music loops. These were created by a rather new friend or acquaintance that I've made by the name of Gregor, and I can't pronounce his last name, or I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I won't even bother. Uh, he's from Germany, super talented electronic music producer, EDM guy. So if we were to drag this particular music loop in, you'll notice that it will auto-populate with uh, instance of Impact XT. In addition to that, we also have all of these different multi-outs. Let's go ahead and put this in its native BPM and let's take off our loop. Let's play this. You can see again here. These are coming in a little bit too hot in terms of the way that I like to work. So if we go ahead and select these tracks and I go ahead and fire off my macro, everything comes in now. That might be a little low. I can bring these guys up. And now this is sitting where I like to work in terms of my gain staging when I'm producing. So whether you're working with one track or you know multiple tracks, this is just a really, really cool way to be able to work. Now the benefit here, again, is that if you choose to use some of the rendering options that we have available in Studio One in terms of these hybrid workflows where we can transform to audio tracks, if I render all channels and render instruments 
and we'll go ahead and click OK. What we will see is that those gain changes that we've made using the mix tool on those different tracks, they will be rendered into the actual audio. And essentially, we don't have to worry about any of these tracks clipping pre-fader and having to bring any of them down because the minute that takes place, it's automatically done. You can see here that we have this. Let's go ahead and bring up our waveform view. Okay, so now you can see over here that really nice and easy for us to be able to do that. And now I'm working with audio files. I can bring these up or down as needed, but essentially I have a really quick and easy way to go through my gain staging when working with virtual instruments. I would usually include some type of download link in order to be able to do this, but I think this is you know not too bad in terms of being able to create it yourself. Like I said, again, all you really need to do is Take note of these two commands, track, add insert to selected channels, and console show channel editor. And you want to make sure that you create a preset in mix tool, you double click your arguments, you select a device, and you select the preset that you want to load. Then it's just a matter of going to your Studio One keyboard shortcuts. And you can see over here, I've mapped this out to a key command that was available, which allows me to do this in one step. So really, really easy in terms of a workflow that makes it really, really easy to gain stage and really, really easy to produce in general when working with Studio One. And it's something that really helps me produce and work at a really quick level. And of course, I can go through my different presets without anything really blasting my ears off. That's all the time I have available for this video. Again, if you found this content useful, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. As always, we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.